Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall Tutorials in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. We continue the shuttle design tutorials. This is part two. In part one we tried flying this with Gem 63 XL boosters and it rolled all over the place and I've discovered why. Somehow during the engine placement procedure with this we placed it off, off center here. And that is why we were rolling all over the place. So, yeah, that's weird. So, yeah, be careful of that. <laughs> I mean, in the future. Self. Okay. Uh, I mean, it was probably when I was trying to hide all the piping here. Which you can sort of understand why. Um, so, we'll be very careful this time. We're going to uh, get that like that. We're going to tuck it in. Okay, and we're going to tilt it, of course. Uh, we have to do that globally, and we're going to make sure that it's not doing anything weird. So holding down shift and ticking two up. Okay, we actually changed it a little bit from that, but we might need to tilt it a little bit more, but for now We'll uh, fly with this and adjust it later. It also occurs to me that we don't have the greatest roll control after the boosters will separate, even if we have gimbling boosters. Last time, you know, we had a lot of trouble controlling it. Well, uh, given the state of this, we probably should have had less trouble controlling it if only that wasn't tilted like that. But yeah, we'll probably want to start the OMS engines when the boosters separate. And then the OMS engines will help us steer and and you know, we can always put more OMS fuel if we need to. Right now we've got four minutes of OMS fuel. So instead of just having four minutes, I'm going to uh, just go ahead and double that. Yeah, okay, so we've got now nearly eight minutes in them. So hopefully they can help with the roll a bit. We'll get to that when we get to that. Let's talk about procedural SRBs. Procedural SRBs are going to be our solution to this problem, but they're a little bit quirky. So they could probably do with an entire tutorial all on their own, but we're going to cover them within this tutorial. And they are these solid rocket motor procedural. So there we go, procedural SRB, whoop, we want to. And if you recall from the previous tutorial, we wanted them to each have 4,000 kilonewtons, but we might not get to that. It depends on how big we want to size these. Because our external tank is kerosene and oxygen, it's fairly small compared to the real shuttle's external tank. So the boosters are going to look really big compared to it. Now there's a limit, obviously we don't want them to go past the diameter of the external tank, otherwise they'll be clipping into the wing of the shuttle. But I'm anticipating something like 2.7 meters here. The real the STS shuttle boosters were 3.7. And you'll note the really tiny nozzles. So first we size the diameter and length. And there's a whole lot of stuff to configure. That's why it's sort of a tutorial on all its own. But then we do the tech levels, which determine the ISPs that you get, the specific impulse, the efficiency. But before we do that, we need to talk about this SRB type surface versus vacuum. So the surface ones are optimized for surface ISP and surface thrust, whereas vacuum is for vacuum optimized. So you'll use vacuum optimized for air lip boosters, like on Delta II, it has six ground lip boosters and three air lip boosters after the six go off, but also for little SRBs that are used for interplanetary transfers, like NASA does occasionally with the star 63s or stuff like that or uh, the IUS on the space shuttle. So, yep, vacuum ISPs for that, but we definitely want surface in this case. And given that, we can take a look at the ISPs that we get for tech levels. Tech level four is that of the space shuttle SRBs. Tech level five is about what you get from an Ariane 5 booster. Uh, tech level six is about what you get from an H2 booster from Japan. And tech level seven, hypothetical, uh, maybe uh, a later variant. But we'll go with four. We can upgrade later. Uh, so we'll fix everything for four and then 
if we want to have more payload capacity, we can increase the tech level. Okay, you note that the ISP here hasn't changed yet. We have to do a whole lot of other settings, and then refreshing is an interesting business. But, okay, I'm going to change the burn time, which will determine the thrust, but it's not going to determine it yet because we have to reset that. So I want about what the shuttle gets, which is two minutes. And the shuttle actually lasted for two minutes and three seconds before it released the boosters. The boosters were released when they had a thrust of 400 kilonewtons so that they didn't overburden the shuttle. At that point, they would fall backwards, you know. So they waited until they were down to a thrust where they would fall away, and then they released them. So, but we, our thrust hasn't updated, and you can tell that by the little tiny nozzles at the bottom of the boosters. Those nozzles size based on the thrust. To get the thrust to update, we actually have to pick up the booster and put it on again. And you'll see that the one that we picked up and put on didn't change, but the opposite one did. So you better be putting these in some sort of symmetry. Uh, so this one has 3,650 kilonewtons, which is pretty close to what we want. So that's about what we're looking for. And it's got two minutes and all. And now if we pick this one up and put it on again, oh, voila, the other one is correct as well. So we can verify. Another setting that we have here is this deflection. If you want them to tilt uh, through the center of mass, uh, that would be sort of the way you'd go if we needed them to do that, but we don't. So if you weren't using gimbling, these have a gimbal limit of five degrees by default. You'd have to lock them for them not to have a gimbal. So five degrees is what we've got working for us. And yeah, but if you wanted to simulate boosters that didn't have gimbling, you could make sure that they were pointed through the center of mass, and that's how something like Atlas V gets away with having a single booster on one side without a booster on the other side kind of thing. It has the nozzle deflected through the center of mass. Actually, it doesn't strictly need that, but because its main engine is so powerful, but it's nice to have that. So, of course, we need nose cones, and I'm going to go with these conformal ones. Not quite shuttle-like, but that's one sort of design difference that we'll go with. Of course, you can paint the boosters differently, just like procedural tanks. You can shape them differently, too. They don't have to be cylinders. They could be other shapes, but um, we'll keep them as a cylinder. I hope that didn't mess up the thrust. It did. <laughs> uh, it did mess up the thrust. So I'm going to once again pull it off and put it on again. And that won't be the end of it. We have to pull this one off and pull, put that one on again, and then it'll be reset for both of them. Okay, now they are both proper. Let's take a look at our sea level thrust weight ratio. 1.31 right now. And, you know, if we were using a... Uh, that's sort of less than what we had with the Gem 63s, and that's because Gem 63s are probably more efficient. Um, they get 275 vacuum and 250 at sea level, so that's a little bit better than what we're getting here. Okay. And then there's the whole case mass, which is a separate thing. That's the fuel efficiency, right? The fuel efficiency is the ISP, but that doesn't say anything about the dry mass of the SRB. Here, the GEM 63XL uh, likely has less of a dry mass. You can see it's about 10%. So it's got 45 tons of propellant in 50 tons of case. So let's call it 11% or something like that. Our dry mass is worse, which is why you almost never see me using procedural SRBs. Uh, I don't use procedural SRBs because their dry mass is pretty darn horrible. Okay, but anyway, they're set we just need to make sure that they separate properly. They're heavier than the GEM 63 XLs, so we'll put three Sceptrons on each and we won't throttle limit them. So one on the top on the nose cone like this, and two on the waist. If you need more beyond this, if there are even heavier boosters like the shuttle ones, then I'd put uh, two up here and then two down here for a total of five. 
Remember the shuttle hangs off of the boosters, basically. So we're going to have these like that. And just on principle, I always grandparent auto strut the boosters. Yes, we are using Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. That's a realism overhaul requirement, but still best to be safe. Okay, so we are at 670 tons altogether. And we are going to make sure these boosters go with the launch clamps. And staging is like that. Okay, well, let's see if we've fixed the roll problem and if we get a whole mission, uh, get to orbit. We want to get to orbit. It's possible that we could have gotten to orbit with the Gem 63s as well if I had known that the engine was the problem. Hopefully, that was the problem and, and we don't have another roll problem. Okay, throttling up, SAS is on. And somebody asked whether the shell is controllable manually. Of course, I was launching it manually before and I only tried Smart ASS belatedly in the hope that it would save us or at least keep things stable, which it didn't do the great jo job of. So, um, Smart ASS has not been great controlling the space shuttle. I don't know if it'd be great controlling this one. Maybe it was just a space shuttle quirk. But I usually use KOS to control, which is a different topic. And I do that mainly because it handles the roll off the pad that the shuttle does a lot better. We're not doing that roll. So we don't want roll. <laughs> we're, we're going direct. Okay, so ignition. And launch. Okay, uh, but we seem to be off, aren't we? Oh no, but it worked last time. Splat. Okay, I think the way I placed the main engine was a little bit wrong there. Let's review. So, you may have that happen. And if you do, we go back to the vertical assembly building. And we're going to tweak that main engine. This needs to be angled more. Because uh, right now this line is grazing the top of the center of mass. So it's pushing over it and pushing down was what's happening. So if you're going down, you need to tilt this, oops, uh, tilt this further up. Ooh. I don't want any bit of it sticking below the heat protection of the wing. That's important. Okay, SAS on, ignition. The whole shell could be lower too, that'll help. It's clipping into the rudder. Another thing we can do is just slide the shuttle down a bit. That fuel line is stretching, but we really want it to be sort of at the level of these boosters. But I'm not fond of the way it's tilting and might hit the rudder, so we're going to clear that a little bit more. I'm going to do a sneaky thing and I'm gonna take those off and put them in on uh, on in mirror symmetry and we're going to actually put them away from the center so instead of here put them a little bit further back not a huge amount it's very mild okay let's see how this goes Oh, where am I launching from? <laughs> I just realized I'm I'm launching from Texas, aren't I? Well, it's fine. That shouldn't make any difference at all. Throttle up. SAS is on. I only noticed that because the inclination was 26 instead of 28.6. 28.6 is for Cape Canaveral. Okay, ignition. And launch. Okay, this time we're controllable. Uh, but only by sort of maxing out the gimbling there. Gotta say, the boosters seem to have quite a lot of lag when it comes to the gimbal response. The trajectory is about the same for any rocket. I mean, with the same thrust to weight ratio. Oh. Uh, okay, we're going through the speed of sound. <laughs> 
Yeah, so KOS I use to make this all prettier, obviously. It's a little bit hard manually. But not a huge problem. It just doesn't look very good. We are through max Q, so now things will get better. And I wanted the OMS engines to start before the boosters go out, or when the boosters go out, so I'm going to switch that. Again, for roll control, which we seem to need, so... Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, I don't know why we are rolling over now, but... Okay, well, this is unplanned. Okay, booster set. Okay, can we get this done without rolling? How the OMS engine's gonna work? Uh, well, sort of. This still feels like there's a residual roll. Well, there definitely is still a residual roll. Let me reset SAS. Oh no, it's still rolling. Oh, it does. I, I don't think those gimbal, do they? Maybe they don't gimbal. And that's why. Okay, let's get the RCS working. Yeah, I think these just don't gimbal, but we'll let them go since uh, we carried more fuel for them. I think there might be a gimbling variant of them though. Well, we'll call it spin stabilization for now. It's trying to slow the roll down. I'm keeping an eye on the time to apoapsis as usual. I just want to make sure it stays going down. Now the fact that we're rolling means that it goes down much faster on one part of our roll than on the other part of our roll. That's okay. We are space bound at the very least. Okay, it's going up now. So I'm gonna make a minor adjustment. I'm gonna take atmospheric all pilot off and go back to SAS and see if SAS can do the RCS. No, I think it's doing worse. Okay, atmospheric all pilot back. I don't know why. Well, here we are over the Gulf of Mexico, spinning around and around. It's probably something interesting going on that I haven't figured out yet. But uh, yeah, maybe just having uh, a gimbling OMS engine would be a big difference. Okay, uh, this engine does throttle. So we should take advantage of that at this point, as our thrust weight ratio is going up quite a lot. Our time to apoapsis is pretty high, given that we're getting close to orbit, so I'm going to point lower and shut down. Okay, so 243 by 157, and we'll wait for the RCS. Maybe the RCS is just not very well placed for a roll, too. We should place dedicated roll thrusters. I mean, these don't look like they're doing roll very well. There are some thrusters that we had on the space plane before we changed to the RD191 and the Mark II parts that we don't have here right now. Okay, I'm gonna take it off of atmospheric autopilot and I want prograde force roll zero. We're gonna shut this down, obviously. Okay, well, it got control of itself. And separating off the external tank. Uh, well, unfortunately, it's in orbit, but for this test, we'll just make do. Thankfully, the little scraps went with it. That's good. Could do an avoidance maneuver by pressing K. Push us away from it. Alright, so we'll wait until apoapsis to round out. Actually, we could probably lift our orbit a bit. Okay, this is actually where we would retro burn, so why don't we just bring the periapsis down and see see where we end up and talk about re-entry a bit. So 
I generate retro burn at 126 degrees east. And so I'm going to start when we get there. And this is for consistency sake so that I can compare trajectories. You know, you have to keep as many variables the same when you're trying to figure out how to do this. We're going to use a reference. I'm not going to use landing guidance, obviously, but it will be helpful if we have a reference for Cape Canaveral. Set that and show landing predictions and see what it tells us and then that's another number to compare to for a future reference if we're gonna blink, bring this down frequently so okay I missed 126 but it takes some time to retro burn anyway I'm going to go to 40 kilometers and I'll finish it off with the RCS for shuttles you need to aim a little bit lower in the atmosphere than you do with pods because of their lift. And then about here, we go ahead with Smart ASS. So for re-entry, I would like to use Smart ASS because it'll be more consistent than me manually doing it. And everything to do with re-entry is like testing to see when to do what pitch, you know, what will be best. We're going to go with 40 degree pitch, which is what the shuttle has. We definitely want it to hold constant roll. And right now it's saying a target difference of 1,600 kilometers from Cape Canaveral. And so what that looks like is um, it's saying that we'll overshoot. Well, okay, so we're going too far south. So this isn't going to be very relevant, though. Maybe we'll end up... No, we're probably going to overshoot everything. So so we would like to reduce that as much as possible. I, I'd rather land in Cuba if we could, but actually we seem to be, we could probably go back over Brownsville, which would be most convenient, but we would need to create quite a lot of drag for that to happen and not a lot of lift. So I'm going to pitch up so that we are going to get drag, yes, lift, no, and see if we can manage that. All depends on our center of lift and center mass, of course, whether we can hold this. And so I'm going to change our destination to Brownsville. Right now we're going to be 3,000 kilometers off. That's definitely what it shows. And I'm hoping that will tick down. But remember that landing guidance doesn't understand our vessel very well, so if anything, we're going to go even further than that. We would really like to see the blue marker way ahead of the red marker. Okay, we're at 100 kilometers. The target difference has come in, come in somewhat and it's decreasing rapidly. But our roll is worryingly tilting one way. We are using some fuel for pitch as well and that's something we need to pay attention to in the future uh, to see how much we need for this whole re-entry run. So we reserve that. That can change if our center of lift and center of mass are different. That'll change how much we need. Oh well, the roll is centered now. Maybe that was just before the aerodynamics. Well, now our pitch is bad. So it's pitching up quite a lot which means we're nose heavy. We need to move the center of mass back. I'll try and do that right now by moving the, this fuel, but it might not be enough. So here we've made quite a lot of progress on that, but we're right here and we're trying to get here. I don't think we're going to slow down enough to make that. We might make Cuba. This is going to have difficulty keeping up the 60 degree pitch that we've got it set to. Oh, and our engine may be a little bit exposed because of the pitch, so I'm going to reduce it. Oh no, uh, roll is a bit of an issue. Okay, 50 degree pitch keeps the engine from overheating, so it's properly protected by the body. For, well, I say that. I'm going to lock the gimbling on it. Oh, that doesn't help. 
Um... I don't know. Uh, is it poking below? Maybe it thinks it's poking below. I don't know. Uh, it's creeping up there. At this pitch, you can see that we're getting lift. And now that target difference is increasing. So that's why I have that as a reference uh, to see whether I'm getting a lot of net lift or not. Just seeing the vertical speed it might be sufficient. It is going to blow up. The engine internal temp is only 3,000, but I don't know. I don't understand sometimes. Now we're nose heavy by a lot. Yeah, I, I don't understand the engines sometimes and when they decide to blow up. Probably shouldn't have blown up. So I'm basically aiming for Cuba. And we want to keep as much pitch as we can to do that. We haven't put life support in here yet as far as TAC life support is concerned, so that's why our life support has not been consumed. Now if we were able to maintain that 40 degree pitch, which I think we would have been able to if we had the engine still uh, weighing us in the back, um, you can see that this sort of uh, setup with retro burning at 126 degrees east and going to about periapsis of 40 kilometers would get us about the same longitude as Cape Canaveral but because we're pitching down we're getting more lift than we otherwise would. Yeah with our inability to keep up pitch we may end up in Haiti at this rate. I mean on the other hand this is actually a pretty good trajectory to make sure that you hit land because Cuba's nicely long and we've got a bunch of islands but Anyway, as far as what to do about the engine blowing up, honestly, um, if, if it was just me, I'd go in and change the heat tolerances. I, I don't see any reason why. Uh, this is a procedural shielded tank. Okay, I mean, you know, but I don't see why of all the parts that we have here, the engine should be blowing up in this case. It, it doesn't seem right to me doesn't seem sane so yeah I would just say no that doesn't seem right I'm, I'm doing things properly it shouldn't be blowing up like that let me just fix that glitch <laughs> it's, a, it's a glitch at that point but you know I'm sure there was a logic to saying the temperatures the way they are but functionally speaking it doesn't seem to produce good results I've seen the shuttle engines blow up as well when Obviously, they're not in a position that they should be blowing up in. Uh, that's on the on the regular space shuttle mods. So, yeah, I don't know why. Note that we fueled up based on the fuel mixture required for the little OMS engines. That's not the same fuel mixture as the RCS uses. That's why we have an imbalance right now. Oh, great! We're going past Haiti. Okay, uh, fine. Puerto Rico, maybe. <laughs> maybe Puerto Rico. And Dominican Republic, obviously. Didn't mean to exclude Dominican Republic in the conversation. We could do with rolling to the left a bit. If we can. Oh, great. We're gonna be offshore at the moment. Well, there's still an island over there. I don't know which island that is, but there are islands. Once we get down to Kerbin orbit velocities in about 45 kilometers, it's feasible to pitch down. Okay, definitely want to plunge down now. I'm looking at that island right there, but I'm not sure we're going to get to it. I guess this one is easier, but it's also tougher to slow down in time. We'll see. But it won't require us to turn. Oh, don't pitch lower than the prograde vector. It should be 20 degrees. We're, we're going down a little bit more than we want to. 20 degrees is good. So high g-forces because we overdid it a bit. Okay, around this time I want a atmosphere. 
Oh, maybe I shouldn't have switched to atmospheric autopod after all. Um, it's not liking this much at all. Let's turn off the RCS. Many things have exploded. We need to be much more delicate about how we switch from something like Smart ASS to atmosphere, atmospheric autopilot. Um, yeah, we're we're a little bit bad on our center of mass center lift. But you know, for our first re-entry, it could have gone worse. It's a pretty hilly island. Normally you wouldn't put your landing gear down at this time, but... Uh... Then I'm gonna pre-apply the brakes even. Yeah, this isn't exactly a landing friendly island, is it? Nope, up, 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 up. Uh, uh, this the, the angles and the shadowing on this terrain is not helping at all. Uh, I'm just going around in a circle to bleed off speed here. Okay. I don't think we have as much lift as we normally do because we have the canards missing. We should probably sit down now. Again, looking at 70 to 80 meters per second though in general though. Oh, we're going to live fast down. Um, but then the slope of the ground is iffy. Ah, okay. All right, we we're in the hands of our brakes in the terrain now. Okay, we have landed wherever we are here. Uh, possibly one of the Virgin Islands, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if anybody's landed here before in Kerbal Space Program, but here we are. So anyway, for our first flight, it could have gone worse, but we obviously have things we need to fix. I, I don't know if I need to do any more shuttle tutorial. You guys can tell me if you think there's something I haven't covered properly or whether you want to see the fixes. If there's some other topic about realism overhaul that you would like to see me do a tutorial about, uh, feel free to tell me. But anyway, uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.